Hi, it's your friendly neighborhood awkward on camera potato and her nails are grown out. So we're going to repaint them today. And I broke one of them, but it's a misdemeanor break. I can't really tell from far away, so you probably can't either. So we're keeping it. Let's get started. I decided to use Q-tips on the broken thumb to keep from getting cotton lodged in any maybe tiny slips slips cracks that are still there um pure acetone because regular nail polish remover this stopped working when i just started putting a crap ton of coats of nail polish on my fingers i overflowed the acetone okay that's cold um let's let's pour that back in the bottle oh that's wet Oh, I spilled it on the floor. Oh, great. I'll be right back. Ah! I fixed it. It's still cold, but, you know, it's not wet anymore because acetone evaporates. So now I'm taking a Q-tip and I'm dipping it in the acetone because that's what I do. And I'm just going to rub it on my thumb until there's no hot pink glitter on my thumb anymore. And uh, I'll be I'll be back again unless you want to sit here watching me rub my thumb with a, a Q-tip dipped in acetone. Okay, bye. The thumb is mostly unpolished. It's stained from where I put dark blue on them last time. I got cotton balls for the rest. This video is not sponsored because it's not costing me any money to make. However, honorarily sponsored by my sunfish. There you go. Um, this is self-explanatory. Uh, put the acetone on the cotton ball, put the cotton ball on the finger. I'll be back. Hi. The nails are naked. Um, this clip is honorarily sponsored by the sunfish that I painted. Go put that there. So now I'm going to touch up on the nails shape with this little dewy. It's a glass nail file. Um, I like it. If you don't want one of these, I don't recommend hacking at your nails with um, those cheap emery boards that don't have great labels, but, um, oh, what's the brand? These doodads, Flowery, um, the Lemon Lime, and the Moody Blue are my favorites, and they're very affordable, so those are nice, too. So I'm going to file, I guess, one or two of these while I'm here. I'm just gonna round off the chipped thumb a little bit, very gently. It doesn't take much with a glass file to actually take some birth off of the children. That's fine, I don't wanna make it too lopsided. It's already too lopsided, but we're leaving it because I don't wanna grow these out for another couple of months. I'm just going to take the side walls of my pointer fingers in a little bit because they look awkward when they fit grow out for a couple weeks. This is really boring to watch and I don't have much to talk about so I'll be back when they're uh, round again. Hi, um, I'm still filing, but um, I thought of something funny to share with you. This clip is sponsored by my ability to s understand sarcasm and jokes, which is to say I'm broke. Um, for example, I was looking at the the college the common app for applying to colleges opened August first. I looked at the supplemental essay prompts for the University of Chicago. One of which is, what's as easy as pie? I was 
confused to say the least until about last night when I realized that it's a play on the cliched idiom, easy as pie. There you go. I don't know when this talk turned into um, listen to Paige Lauren talk about her college applications on while she files her nails, but um, just wanna which we just wanna just wanna chat a little bit. Um, I'm working on my MIT fly-in application currently, and they want to know in a hundred words or less what song or jingle gets stuck in my head currently, and that would be the Limu Emu commercials by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Um, I saw an emu on in like second grade when I went to like a local like safari park type of thing and I've been casually obsessed with them ever since and so every time there's a new Limu Emu commercial I commit it to memory. That's just a fun fact about me. So, there you go. Okay, I'm gonna do the um, YouTuber spiel as I file my last finger. So, uh, like, comment, and subscribe, please, if you want me to paint my nails on camera again, or do something else on camera, I don't know. And, um, if you're a senior right now, like me, comment your top pick for college or your dream school. If you're not, I guess you can still do that. Or um, tell me what to do on camera because I'm embracing my awkwardness and I wanna do this again. Okay, that's, that's all, I'll be back. Hiya, the nails are filed. Uh, the cuticles are pushed back, and uh, this clip I th originally thought was going to be honorarily sponsored by my ACT scores. That got a little too deep too fast, so it's instead sponsored by Southern Sweet Tea in a solo cup. Okay, so it's now time to put a base color on my fingernails. I'm going to be putting a bunch of fish on them. And so I need to decide if the ocean background is going to be solid or sparkly. And I decided the answer is sparkly. It's always sparkly. This is Essie's Aruba Blue. It's like my favorite dark blue. It's like my school colors too. I always wear it for academic team. I like to. Um, so whoop, there goes on a coat, and ooh, nice. I filed the broken nail well. So the polish looks relatively smooth over the top of it. That's always nice. I got this polish right before Essie switched their brush styles. This one still has like the super skinny brush that I love so um also attached to it for that reason that looks a little lopsided that it's broken you can tell i'm gonna pretend i can't tell because i don't want to spend another couple of months growing these out i think i already said that that's okay we're embracing the awkwardness oh these cuticles look terrible gorgeous I mean, I, I promise I know how to paint my nails. I haven't done it really on camera before though. So why am I hand shaking? I don't know. How about I lay some sunfish fun facts on you while I paint? I, this clip is long. So I'm going to paint a couple fingers while I think of fun facts and then do that. Getting ready to paint the second hand of nails. Um, this section is very in character 
it is honorarily sponsored by my compilation of sunfish research. Not research I did, research other people did, and I bought to read because I love sunfish. Okay, so first fun fact, sunfish are adorable. Um, they lack a caudal fin, which makes gives them their kind of half fish shape. Um, they also don't real. their tail isn't a tail, it's a cartilaginous mass, um, and you can tell a lot of the sunfish apart depending on how many kind of, I guess, divots are in it. There's three different types of mola blank, um, mola tecta, mola alexandrini, and mola mola. There's two other sunfish um, that are in a different genus. Um, a genus, yes. Um, so they their binomial nomenclature starts with a different thing than mola. They're all technically colloquially um, called molas, though. Mola mola, um, it's kind of the namesake, the classic ocean sunfish. It has the most research done about it. Um, Mola tecta was discovered in 2017 by Marianne Nygaard and her team. That one's my favorite, but um, I'm gonna talk about Mola Mola because that one has the most research done about it and the most fun facts that I can therefore spit off. Um, it's the largest bony fish, although ironically it doesn't have more bones. It's actually got kind of a small spaced out skeleton supplemented with a lot of cartilage. Um, it's the most prolific fish. Um, females can carry 300 million eggs in a single clutch. It's also the um, fastest growing slash largest um, difference from newborn to adult growth rate. Um, they start like a few millimeters tiny 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 and they look kind of like baby puffer fish and then they can get over two meters long um the record is something around 10 feet for a sunfish um mola you can tell the three molo blank species apart relatively easily if you use mola tecta or mola mola as kind of a base. Mola tecta compared to mola mola looks more streamlined and um, has fewer divots or deviations in shape on its on its um, tail, pseudo tail. Um, and then mola mola alexandrini, common name. Its common name is the um, chin bump sunfish for a reason it has big bumps it on its um facial area its front um it looks very lumpy and that's how you tell it's a mola alexandrini um i think there's some differences in the pseudo tail as well uh they move really slowly about two to three miles an hour i believe and they uh they get their name because they like to sunbathe. They're uh, gentle giants and I love them. I'm gonna come back when my base coats of nail polish are all on. You can see they're very patchy right now. Peace. Well, the, the fingers are appropriately metallic blue in preparation for a small fish atop them. Um, this clip is not sponsored, not even honorarily sponsored. Um, and if you're wondering why a potato has super long, high maintenance nails, the answer is this is the result of a three to four year special interest in all things beauty product. The, the special interest does not remain, but the uh, nail painting does. I'm gonna put top coat on them work on fly-in application and I'll be back when that top coat is dried down enough for me to uh, break out the acrylic paint. 
Hi friends, um, I'm ready to paint a singular fingernail with a fish. Um, I'm gonna start with the lovely sunfish and that's gonna go on my right thumb. Uh, this clip is sponsored by my dirty paint palettes that I only clean out when there's enough paint in them so that I can like easily like pop it out. Okay, so um, unfortunately I can't match the detail of my earlier sponsor on a finger. So I have a fish color and an eye color of paint. I also have paint brushes and water, but you know, that's not as necessary for you to see. So I'm gonna stick my fish body color in the paint palette. I'm gonna grab a, a tiny paintbrush with my left hand and I'm gonna dip it in the paint because that's how paint works. And then decided I wanna see the fish correctly when they're facing, no, I wanna take pictures, so I need to paint them like this. The, the sunfish won't matter though because that's on my thumb so you won't see it in pictures. So I'm gonna start with its cute little body. Okay, um, we're going, we're going well so far. It's honestly just an oval that's pointed on one side. Um, sunfish are really easy to draw. I love them. If you didn't notice. Oop, he's a little off center, that's okay. Um, so now I'm just gonna, now all we need on the body is two cute little fins, rather long fins, but uh, there's one. I use too much paint, but you know, that's okay. In the, in the palette, not on the finger, the paint on the finger is pretty okay. Just gonna boop, boop. Okay, um, now, now he needs another coat of paint so that he's like, you know, not splotchy. And the reason that I use acrylic paint instead of nail polish is one because I don't have the appropriate nail polish brushes and they get really messy really fast. Um, the second reason is if you mess up, water and a q-tip compared to acetone ru and ruining risking the uh, manicure underneath. Look, there's a second little mollifin there. Cute. Now I'm gonna put this paintbrush in my water cup and get a tinier paintbrush. Boop. Oh, look, I'm doing the beauty guru thing. There we go. And a, just a touch of my darker shade of blue. Then I'm gonna put in the little slot next to it. Oop. I didn't use as much paint in the palette that time. Nice. And I'm just gonna grab a tiny dot of it. You probably can't see that because it's a tiny dot of it. And um, now the sunfish has an eye. It's a little messy, but that's okay. I haven't freehanded anything on my nails in forever. That's that one. Now I'm gonna go decide what fish I want next and I'll be right back. Hi, I decided a hot pink jellyfish is going on my other thumb. So I'm gonna put the bubble, actually it's not hot pink, it's bubblegum pink. Um, Same-ish difference as far as the fingernails go. So I'm gonna take my slightly bigger paintbrush that I'm gonna have just cleaned. Try not to take four minutes this time. Um, that was a really long clip of the sunfish, but you know, we love sunfish. They deserve a lot of time. I get to use my right hand for this one, which is nice. I'm right-handed and I'm just going to paint a vague circle 
with the pink. Put it back in the water. Take my smaller paintbrush, also dip it in the pink. That's too much paint on the paintbrush. And now make little squiggly lines like a jellyfish. Perfect. Now, it's splotchy. You can see that it's a jellyfish. I'm gonna come back after I put a second coat on this and grab the next fish paint. Hi, so I poorly painted a clownfish off camera and the next one I decided is going to be a purple nude branch, which is the uh, less more f less colloquial but more fun to say name for a sea slug. So um, basically to put that on my finger, I'm just gonna draw a purple squiggle with some tiny lines coming out of it. Um, fun fact, there's a nude branch that looks like a sheep and it's adorable. If I can find a picture and how to put it in here, I will do so right now. And I'm gonna come back when I finish painting the nude branch. I finished the nude branch. She's right there. She has tiny eyes that you can't see. Um, next up is a beluga whale, which not technically a fish, but um, is marine, so it counts. Taking a slightly bigger paintbrush than I used for the nude branch and almost white paint. I don't like the bright white so this one's called antique parchment and that's too much um i'm just gonna paint a beluga whale shape i don't know how to explain what a beluga whale shape is um they have They have oblong heads and they're adorable and they're my second favorite um, marine creature. So there you go, um, Bailey and Finding Dory as a beluga whale. Um, love them, that's all. See you soon. Hi, I uh, finished the beluga whale and added some details to the nude branch. And now I'm gonna switch it up with a coral moment a coral that is coral colored. Um, I'm running out of ideas for fish. So coral it is. So I usually paint my corals on my nails. I've done this a surprising amount of times with just a straight line down the center and then a few branches. They usually end up kind of cactus-like, that's okay. there's the base of a coral so then I'm gonna put another coat of paint on it add some coral spots and I'll be back okay um, I'm back with a coral on my pinky um, so I'm gonna have to get into some more obscure fish because there are six marine critters on my fingers and still four left and I'm out of my favorites so the next one is going to be a bicolor blenny and I'm going to see if I can put a picture in. If not, I will link one in the description. So they're long and skinny. They're purple on the front, orange on the back. That's about all there is to these little dudes as far as painting goes which is why I picked it because um, this is turning out less nicely than I imagined. So I'm just gonna paint a purple stripe. Oop, that is a really uneven purple stripe. That's uh, a more uneven, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wash that off and be right back when I've done this. I finished the blenny um, 
it could probably be mistaken for a royal grana or a um dotty back so that's fine but royal grandma or dotty back that's fine we love him anyway um i need to go get more paint but the next one is going to be a bicolor angelfish so i'll be right back okay this clip is honorarily sponsored by the rest of my paint brushes and so for the bicolor angelfish i'm going to um hope that i don't have to wash this one off because it's going to be approximately the same level of difficulty as the blenny by which i mean too many small lines so i'm gonna start with the tail this time around so i can get rid of the super tiny paintbrush and opt for the slightly less super tiny paintbrush oh that's a nice tail do it do i want to make it no i don't want to make it slightly more realistic because i'm just gonna mess it up and actually i still need the super super tiny paintbrush but this time in, oh, I didn't plan this well, super dark blue. Hopefully it stands out enough from the um, dark blue ocean background. It, it, we're gonna hope. We're gonna, we're gonna call, we're gonna say it does. And ignore the fact that it actually doesn't. Um trying to think of more fun facts that I have. I already gave all of my Mola Mola fun facts. Um, another one of my favorite fish that is way too detailed to put in this video because I would never try to put it on my fingers because that would be torture is the clown trigger fish. I really like a lot of trigger fishes. Um, now we're going back to the yellow. Um, there are 41 species of triggerfish. Um, f as far as freshwater goes, um, cichlids are pretty cool. I'm getting a betta fish tank because I don't really have a lot of room for much else, but I want a fish. So I'm getting a betta. Um, that's probably still about a week out if not more, but I have the tank, just not the fish in it. Maybe I will make a vlog about my fish tank maintenance. Um, maybe. So now I'm just putting an eye and the little tiny blue stripe on the front of the angelfish on. that's mixing with the yellow that's okay we're gonna call that a day that's actually pretty cute um there he is next to the blenny and i'm gonna look up more fish to put on my nails see you soon hi this clip is sponsored honorarily by my fish lanyard and so i decided that the final two critters gonna put on my nails are going to be a stingray and a fish that's actually really cool looking and new to me, a green bird wrasse. Picture here if I can figure out how to do that. If not, link in the description. So I'm gonna start with the stingray. He's gonna be just a plain gray, um, but he's gonna have gold polka dots on him as kind of an accent nail. So I already put all my paint in my palette because I'm prepared. I'm really not. Oh my gosh, I forgot how a stingray is shaped. I'll be right back. I looked up pictures of a stingray. We're good now. So I'm gonna do that. Oh, look at this little baby. Oh, you're so cute, Mr. Stingray. I don't have anything new to talk about. Um, comment how your day's been because that's relevant. 
that's a really long stingray tail, so I'm gonna make the stingray a little bigger. I usually don't put that as much effort into putting designs on my fingernails. I just happen to want to today. I'm regretting it a little bit because half of these look okay, half of them look like a toddler painted them. That is a-okay, my friends. Um, so now I'm gonna go back to my picture of this green bird wrasse. And so I had to make up a special color of blue for it because it's a little bit lighter than the other blues I've been using, like the dark blue that I used on the angelfish. But that is fine dandy. He has a really long nose. This is interesting looking. I'm excited. I have, a, I have an event to go to tomorrow and I'm hoping that people are gonna ask me about my fingernails because I wanna talk about all these cool fish that I'm painting. Okay, so then he has like lime green. Actually, I'm not prepared. I forgot to put the lime green on the palette. But then it's the lime green kind of mixed with blue. I'm gonna call this just plain lime green to make it a little bit easier to paint. That the right brush it is dry off and so i'm just gonna paint a lime green fish body now kind of mix it with the blue a little bit to get that effect now i'm gonna put the make the fin green to start with and then put a little bit of blue inside of it because that's what my picture looks like. There we go, and drag out the edges just a little bit. And that is a really mess messy green bird wrasse. New fish to me. Hopefully you all have learned something about some fun fish today. Um, I'm not gonna put top coat on on camera because that's boring so join me maybe next time for more fish or something else related things bye